So we're solving absolute values here. I'm David from Electric Teaching. And I got a sample problem up here. I got three times the absolute value. This is the absolute value part right here. 4W minus 1. Absolute value. Then it's a minus 5 equal 10. As I say right here, we want to, we want to isolate the absolute value expression first. So if you focus on just this absolute value expression, we are going to undo the minus 5, and we are going to undo the times 3 first to get it down to the absolute value expression by itself. Sometimes I like to do this in that European style of, of taking notes, so I'm going to add 5 and divide by 3. Those are the actions, so instead of cluttering them up near the problem like we usually do here, I'm showing how I got to it over here. So if I add 5, I got 4w minus 1 inside the absolute value is equal to 15. Next step, everybody see it, I think? Divide by 3. So I'm going to show the both styles. If I divide by 3 here, divide by 3 here, showing my work inside here. Or showing your work over here on the outside, I think, is also a nice way of doing it. I'm giving you guys options, okay? What's left? What's left? Let's see, we got the 4w and the absolute value by itself. Don't forget, this is a 1. 3 over 3 leaves a 1. So that really says 1 times my absolute value. We don't need the 1. That's the beauty of canceling. It removes it because 1 times anything is itself, the identity rule. So that leaves just the, the, um, the absolute value expression. We've got it equal 5 over here. We have isolated the absolute value. We are now going to split into two equations. This is why. Does everybody in here agree that if I put a negative 5 inside for that expression, it would be true. It would be equal. You see that. If I put a negative 5 in here, if I put a negative 5 in there and take the absolute value of it, that's positive 5. And that equals 5. So the inside, the inside of it can, the inside of it can be substituted for minus 5. So if negative 5 is replacing the whole 4w minus 1, it should be true. So I'm going to write that a solution can be found by setting the expression inside to negative 5. Very similar, here's the other equation. It could also be positive 5 and just as true and just as true. Can you see the steps we're going to do for each of these? I'm going to do this a little bit of European style. We're going to add one to all of these, both of these equations, both sides, and we're going to divide by four. Does everybody see the two steps to take it home? To get the variable by itself. Everybody agree? The variable will be by itself if I add one, divide by four. Let's go ahead and do that on each one. Careful when you add one. Sometimes it is better to do it this way because you make less mistakes. So if I add one, I get a negative four. Over here, four W, and I get a, looks like it, is that right? I add one, oh, not four, made a mistake there. Six, six, it's okay. Last step, divide by four. W is equal to negative four over four, which is negative one. Everybody got that? Cool. Box it, draw attention to it. Over here, if I divide, I've got 6 over 4. Do you see the 2's in there? There are 2 on top and a 2 on bottom. The same idea of canceling and making a 1 up here doing my algebra, that's the whole idea of reducing a fraction. It's There's a 2 over 2 in there, and who needs 2 over 2 inside a problem multiplied? That's 1 times something. We don't need that. So it reduces 3 over 2. Okay? Everybody got that? Okay, I wrote a new problem here, a new problem here, same idea. What are we going to do, people? Isolate. What are we isolating? Absolute value. We need to isolate the absolute values. Everybody see how we're going to do that? Subtract and divide. So it's basically like treating it like a variable itself. I'm treating the whole absolute value as a variable itself. So if I do this and I subtract 3, subtract 3, then you're going to get, oops, not eight, excuse me, nine, nine, oops, and then next step, 
Divide by 3, getting it all by itself. It's supposed to be a bigger minus there. Getting the absolute value all by itself. Now, what do we do? Two problems, two equations, two problems, two equations. So, either the 1 half x minus 2 is going to be equal to the negative of 3, because you can replace this part with negative 3. You can substitute it out. You can make it equal. Substitute it out, and it would be true. You could also equal, though, the positive, the positive 3. Okay. Last two steps. These are two steppers here, two steppers here. So the last two steps are... Let's see, how do we undo that? What are the two steps? Nick, what are the two steps? Undo. Oh, so add, add, add two, cool, and then undo. How do you undo a multiply by one half? Times two. That makes sense, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. If you, if you undo something that goes like half of, what's the opposite of going half of? Double. Double. Does that make sense? If somebody took half your money, how would you get it back? You double it back, right? Okay. So the next step is to go times two to get rid of the half parts. To get rid of the half parts. So if I added two, as we said here, it'd leave negative one. If I added two over on this other problem, it would leave five. The next step is to multiply by two. So x is negative two or... Or x can be 10, and it should work. If I put a 10 up here, if I put a 10 up there in the top, will it come out, the whole thing on the left, come out to 12? Half of 10 is 5, minus 2 is 3, times 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12. Checks, checks. Same thing with the negative 2. If you put a negative 2 in here, if you put a negative 2 in there, that'll be negative 1 with the negative 2 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 makes positive 3, so you still get a 9 plus 3 is 12. It checks as well. Hopefully that has helped.